Hello, and welcome to the Alter Everything podcast. My name is Michael Cusick. I'm the senior multimedia producer at Alteryx. Today, we have a special episode guest hosted by Flavia Brancato, who runs our Alteryx user groups worldwide. She is joined by Eric Pyatt, who works for Train Technologies in Logistics Network Modeling and Optimization. Eric helps run one of our most active Alteryx user groups in Charlotte, North Carolina, while also serving on the board for the Council of Supply Chain Management Professionals, an organization that is working to expose high school students to analytics platforms and tools. Eric has some great advice for getting into the analytics field and speaks powerfully about the power of opportunity in this space. I think you're going to love this conversation. Let's get started. All right. Hi, Eric. We are thrilled to have you today in our podcast. So happy to be able to have the opportunity to tell your story. So please introduce yourself. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. My name is Eric Pyatt. I uh, work for Train Technologies. You all should know this awesome company. And I'm excited to uh, kind of share a little bit about myself and my, uh, my journey and my career. Awesome. And we are excited too, since, uh, you know, your in- impact story that you share in the community, actually, that was not a, only a very inspiring story, but everything that you said there, you just excited us even more to know more about your journey. So can you tell us about exactly what you share with us? Sure. So um, I joked earlier before we jumped on about the music, right? And if I could cue up a track right now, it would be started from the bottom. That's, so that's my corny Drake reference, if you don't know. But uh, I think my story kind of started back in 2008, 2009. We were then Ingersoll Rand, not Train Technologies yet. But I started out working on the shop floor. And as I referenced in, in, in the impact story, I was taping and packing boxes and shipping boxes all over the U.S. And I always knew that I had potential to do more. And when I share that story uh, with you guys, something that I that I read or came across years ago stood out to me, and it was around capitalization rates. If you are familiar with with that topic, have you heard about that topic, Fabia? I haven't, so I I want to hear more. So basically, it's it's the rate at which a a given community capitalizes on the human potential, right? So what percentage of those people who are capable of of achieving something actually achieve it? It might've been Malcolm Gladwell that that wrote about it. He's probably one of my go-to authors, but they referenced that story, The Blind Side. If you're familiar with the football player that was adopted by this family, And they kind of led him, they nurtured him and led him to a professional NFL career. That was with Sandra Bullock? That's right. That's right. That's the story. Awesome. I just saw this movie two days ago for whatever reason. It just popped up. Oh, really? (laughs) Yeah. That's what it's, uh, it's, it's great that that I brought it up. So in, in that story, you know, it resonated with me in particular and probably so many others. My story is unique, but not necessarily uncommon. And it's about opportunity. Right. Are you positioning yourself or are you making yourself available to take advantage of opportunities? And I remember in that write up uh, when they were talking about capitalization rates, that gentleman referenced that there were several kids in his community that was poverty stricken that were better than him, that had more potential than he, you know, than he might have had. But he was just provided with the opportunity and given the pathway to kind of make his dreams come true. I liken that to my story, right? I talked about that manager that, not manager, he wasn't a manager, he was over the entire operation. But um, he gave me an opportunity that he didn't have to. You know, he provided me with the pathway and set me up to, you know, learn a new skill set. And back then it was Microsoft Access. So talking about opportunities, right? Uh, we know that getting your foot in the door can be so important to land your next career, right? Or expanding the opportunities that are available to you. So can you give us like what would be some steps or ideas you have 
for people that, you know, who are looking for those opportunities? Sure. First thing I'd say is just to be available. Be available to take advantage of the opportunity when it, whenever it comes. And just be prepared. So prepared and availability go hand in hand. You know, I tell my nephews and my son, my daughter all the time, you got to learn how to swim. And basically, that's another way of saying you, you have to learn how to network. If you, you aren't good with people, you have to work on it. And you have to find ways to, to showcase your talent or to show that you do have potential. I think in that write-up, I mentioned that it's useless if you have all of the knowledge in the world, but you never get an opportunity to kind of showcase it. I think that's a great advice because networking is gold. You can network in so many different ways, right? And you're just giving some examples, and I think this is a great advice. And the last thing I'll say for like maybe some of the uh, the younger folks is, and again, I sound like an old man, but you know you have to dress for the role that you want, not necessarily the, the role that you have, right? Because you disarm people when you look like them or when you are in the very similar setting, you disarm them. If you look the same way, you're dressed in a similar fashion. True. So I, I've always thought that was an important thing. Definitely. Tell us. How have you seen your life change since your move to the data analytics space? This, this was something totally new, right? As you mentioned that you were stuck before you pivoted to Altery. So can you tell us your experience in this transition? Yeah, so uh, when you talk about Altrix, it's a platform where, you know, you can develop a certain level of, of expertise. And I don't necessarily want to use that term expertise because I'm not an expert, you know, we're always learning. But when you gain a higher level of proficiency, any space or any skill set, you know, you tend to develop confidence. And, you know, what happened, you know, with me and Altrex and my journey is that confidence ultimately started to strip away some of my introversion, right? So I consider myself an introvert. Mm -hmm. And, um, one of the things around my classification as an introvert is I, you know, I never really, you know, was interested in kind of doing things like this, <laughs> you know, yes. speaking publicly or anything. But um, if you're confident about something and you have a, a skill set that that's in high demand, sometimes it, it pays to step out. And that's that's kind of what I've been doing. Since you mentioned the introvert, right? I bet so many people in the Alteryx community would also identify themselves as being an introvert. And that sets up a safe space for folks to feel comfortable putting themselves out there. Like you said, network, talk, and share experiences. And hopefully they want to engage, right, with other peers. Yeah. So let's talk about that in some ways that you have stepped outside of your comfort zone and actually become became a real force in the Alteryx community. One of them, the Charlotte User Group, that you are one of our amazing leaders. Yeah, so I'll, I'll take a step back and talk about stepping outside of my comfort zone. And I'll take you to, I think it was the Inspire conference that was in Anaheim. Okay. If, uh, if I remember correctly, at that conference, I recognized a ton of people, right? And I was doing my best to try to network and, you know, rub elbows and go to all of the, uh, the events outside of the sessions, the learning sessions. And in, in my conversations with someone that I had just met, they recommended a book. We were talking about being, being introverts and not necessarily enjoying all of the people in the crowds, right? And she recommended this book to me that was called Quiet, The Power of Introverts. It's a book by Susan Cain. And that book, it actually changed how I saw myself, right? So in a world where we, where we tend to celebrate people who are you know, bold and charismatic and kind of look away from folks who are quiet or consider themselves introverts. This book actually helped me get courage and look at some of my uniqueness in, uh, in different ways. That book talked about how introverts are very creative people, great observers and great at problem solving. And I identified with a lot of that stuff. The simple fact that that book was recommended at an Alltrex Inspire conference, <laughs> you know, it, it says a lot about the community 
and where I saw myself and how I fit. So that's the one thing. But as a user group leader, it's that's been a phenomenal journey as well. So I've led the help lead the the Charlotte user group for over two years now, and the team has been phenomenal with some of the work that we've we've done and we've put together some great meetings. We've built a network. I mean, we have folks from all different walks of life and different businesses. Uh, we all come together and we we brainstorm and we come up with ideas around use cases that might be interesting to present to folks. And and we learn a lot from one another. I work in logistics and transportation. Some of the other folks on the group on the uh, leaderboard they work in banking. And there's a real melting pot of ideas and thoughts that go into some of the things that we, you know, we put together and put out. And it's a, there's also a really deep sense of fellowship, you know, when I, whenever we get together and put, put an event on. And, and the Charlotte user group is one of our most active user groups. Since I joined the program in uh, 2021, I, I could tell right from the bat that you guys were so organized and like you said you not only build relationships among you leaders co-leads that needs to get together to come up with the agenda with the events format we had done combined events with other communities like the tableau community which was That's right. a successful like a great event uh where we brought two different communities uh, from two different platforms that works actually together, right? A lot, in a lot of projects. And I was like super happy to see that part as well. But to your point also for the networking part, like the user group meetings are pretty much, you know, like thousand percent networking. Could you tell us like, what will be in, in your perspective? Like what is the best part of the value for the user group meetings for, for the members, for the people that actually attend those meetings? Yeah, so I don't want to mess up the quote, but I think it says, a good artist copy, a great artist steals. Is that right? Have you guys heard that before? I haven't. So if I'm saying it wrong, I think you understand. But right. I've taken so much of what what we've covered in uh, in the user group meetings back to my work and leveraged a ton of the information, a ton of the use cases, and applied it to some of the some of my day-to-day tasks and functions and i would come out of these different meetings and things of that that nature at my job and look like an absolute rock star (laughs) when i actually got it from the exposure at in these user group meetings like people are working on some fascinating stuff and one use case might you know might fit a problem you know that you're trying to solve and with some tweaks and adjustments, you can actually fit it to your organization and solve a problem that, you know, you may not have known you had before. True. And and that's what we see in pretty much every single meeting. Like the, yes. you mentioned even like among you leaders, you work for different industries. So that, yes. you know, experience sharing those use cases, even like, you know, what you guys are using the platform for, it is so amazing to just to watch that and see that how many opportunities you get you can do right with that and i think this is the magic as well that's when i i attend those meetings it's just like you said we keep learning every day we are learning but like i'm blown away every time that i watch them that i that i attend a user group meeting i want to just with all this journey like you have been involved in so many different projects in the community you are a champion there user group leader but can you tell me a little bit about your experience as a black man in the analytics? Very good question. So I'll start to answer that question with some data, and I'm, I'm pretty sure everyone will appreciate it. So African-Americans make up just 7.5% of the data analyst population. Wow. Just to give some perspective. I work in transportation and logistics, so that's the greater portion of a supply chain. And a friend of mine, friend and colleague at Central Piedmont Community College, he's he's over their supply chain program. He told me about a statistic the other day that was staggering as well. 
And it's that African Americans make up just 7% of the supply chain industry. So we are vastly underrepresented, uh, and there's a lack of exposure to these fields. Now, on the other side of it, it's not, it, there's nothing negative about being at 7.5% or 7% because the industry is a welcoming community, right? I've received nothing but warm embraces since I've been a part of, say, for example, the Altrex community, and everyone's been truly supportive. I agree. But I, I will say that there's almost always like a, a sense of awareness that there aren't very many Black people at the event. It's gotten a lot better over the years as, as far as the diversity is concerned. But if you're a Black person and you've been to an Altrex conference or a Tableau conference, you will definitely understand when I reference the nod that you receive when you pass another black person walking to a session. So there's almost always a sense of acknowledgement, like you get a nod. Yeah, I know you can't see me, but I'm, yeah, like you I'm, doing, the, yeah, and yeah, I'm, I'm, doing, I'm doing the nod. <laughs> and I'm doing back to you, trust me. Yeah, but so I'm sure like the people that know, they know and they understand what I'm saying. There's a nod that you get when you see another person of, of color at these conferences. So that sort of thing has been uncomfortable, but it's the space that we're in. And again, I want to reiterate the fact that the community is a very welcoming community. It's just that I would love to see more. And I think that happens if we start to be intentional about giving folks exposure to this sort of a community. Because again, I fell on it, right? It, it took someone to give me an opportunity and kind of start me down a path. It's exactly it. And I agree 100%. Thanks for sharing all this, this information, the data, like it's so important. But when you talk about community and you kept saying, right, like how welcoming the community is and like everybody, you know, it's there to help each other, to share experiences. Yep. But with all of that, we were just talking about how many things you're doing since you transition your career in the data analytics world. But you also done some great work with nonprofits. So you are, you know, you're a champion. You are everywhere. So can you tell us about this? Yeah, I mean, I sometimes I feel like I'm spinning more place than I have hands. <laughs> <laughs> right. But I also sit on the on the board for the Council of Supply Chain Management Professionals. Number one, because they're passionate about the things that I've just just talked about, I'm passionate about uh, about those things. And we're working to introduce a program to local high schools that will provide students access and exposure to platforms like the Altrex Spark Ed program, giving people, giving students that exposure early on to the technology that they might need in order to help change that percentage for African Americans in data analysts, or not just African Americans, it's anyone that needs exposure to this sort of platform to where they can learn and find a pathway to gain certifications and, you know, make themselves more valuable when it comes to positioning, right? So when the opportunity does come up, this is a part about being prepared for when the opportunity arises. Start them out early. And so it, we're not just offering the Altrex Spark pro program, we, you know, we're doing some things with Queen City Robotics. There's some work that's being done or put together around a supply chain fundamentals program. It's phenomenal work that we're that we're doing, and we're looking to get this program established in up to five high schools in the Charlotte area. And a part of that goal, a stretch goal, is to have it implemented in at least two Title One schools where that exposure is needed more than ever. That is incredible. Like, it's so inspiring. Your your whole story, of course, like we started talking about the impact story series that you, that you share with us, but your whole journey, it's so inspiring. So I just want to wrap up asking you this. When you hear Alteryx, when you talk Alteryx, what excites you? All of the possibilities. There's so much, and the platform has changed so much over the years, but there's still so many different 
possibilities when it comes to using a platform like Altrex. The community has grown in droves since I've been a part of it. And I'm excited to see what happens next. I'm excited to see where it goes next. Eric, I am too. And I'm going to keep my eyes on your next projects because I'm sure it's going to be successful and you're going to do a lot of great things, especially if the students in the high schools, the kids. So thank you. I want to thank you again. It was a pleasure having you today with me here. And, um, you know, I hope to catch up soon. Thank you for all you do in the community and for the user group program. Thank you. It, it was my pleasure to uh, spend some time and, and share my story again with you. Thank you. Thanks for listening. For more information on the organizations and resources mentioned in this episode, please check out our show notes at community.altrix.com slash podcast. Catch you next time.